Hey, I hope you guys are ready to do some more critical thinking because we are about to dive into something new. The last couple episodes, we've been working on the beginnings of argumentation, looking at arguments, what those are, how they're structured in a very, very basic way. And we took a look at critical analysis of arguments in our last session. But today we're going to be shifting a little bit and focusing on some informal logic, informal fallacies in particular. Now, when I teach a logic course, I usually do deductive logic first, what we call formal logic. But I'm going to reverse it for our purposes because I think the informal fallacies are going to be something that you can find immediately applicable to different situations that you have, whether you're reading an article, watching a news broadcast, or just talking over issues with somebody. These are going to be the types of things that you see people use over and over again in regular conversations. So I think if you have the informal fallacies, at least a good overview of some of the most common informal fallacies, you're going to be able to respond to some of those things, pick out where mistakes are being made, and then later on we're going to get into more of the formal stuff. Now in the process, we're going to be looking at lots of different informal fallacies. And believe me, there are hundreds of informal fallacies that we could put out on the table. I don't want to do that. But I am going to give you a fairly thorough list of informal fallacies. And in this episode, what we're going to do is just lay out the basics, introduce you to what fallacies are. I know we've been through that before, but we're going to go through it a little bit more and a little bit more in depth. So if you want to turn our attention over, let's take a look at informal fallacies, introducing informal fallacies. Now, the first thing I'm going to go through is just a number of statements, just a number of claims or very, very rough arguments. And I want you to try to figure out what's going wrong with all of these. Where, where is there a potential problem? Now, if it's just a claim, of course, you're not going to be able to say where the problem is as far as an argument goes. But you can imagine how this claim might be used within an argument. Now, I'm also not going to tell you what the problems are because you're probably going to sense that there's something going on that's not, not right. But at the end of reviewing all the different fallacies, you should be able to come back to this and take a look at each, each one of these and identify what the problem is on your own. So I'm just going to lay them out right now. Let's just read through them real quickly. All wars are the result of economics. George Bush would make a great president because he went to Yale. That guy's so smart, he would probably be a great teacher. Men should not speak out on abortion because they don't get pregnant. If animals have similar anatomical structures, it proves common descent. Catholic priests shouldn't counsel married couples because priests never experience marriage. Don't tell me how to raise my children if you're not a parent. You shouldn't advocate going to war unless you're willing to enlist your own children. Islam is a false religion because it produces terrorism. She's blonde, so she must be stupid. Marijuana should be illegal because it's a gateway drug that leads to more dangerous drugs. If you cheat on your homework, then you'll cheat on your taxes and end up in prison. Same-sex marriage should be illegal because most people are against it. I'm voting for Hillary Clinton because she was endorsed by my favorite singer. Now, like I said, go back later on and see if you could figure out exactly what's gone wrong with all of those. But what we want to do now is shift our attention and take a look at logical fallacies and we'll slowly introduce the topic. But let's start with the types of logic. First, we've got what's called formal logic. This is a bit of a review, but it focuses on the form or structure of an argument. Deductive reasoning. Arguments are either valid or invalid. And sound or unsound, that's basically how you'll judge whether a formal deductive argument is a good or bad argument. We don't use the word good or bad so much as valid or invalid, sound or unsound. If there are no errors in the form of the argument and if the premises are true, then we can say the conclusion is absolutely certain. When we come to informal logic, that's going to focus on the matter or the content of an argument. What's going on? Right? We're looking at inductive or scientific reasoning, the arguments are never valid, they're never sound, they're either strong or weak, and it comes in different degrees. So the conclusions that we come up with are probable rather than certain. Right? The best you're going to have is a highly probable informal argument or inductive argument. Now we're going to get an induction uh, a little while later in another episode, but right now we're going to actually spend several episodes just dealing with the, what we call the informal fallacies. 
the uh, inductive reasoning is going to follow that. And then we're going to finally get to the deductive stuff later on. So we're going to treat these like in the reverse order that I just listed them, informal logic first, formal logic afterward. Now when it comes to logical fallacies, you remember that a fallacy is a mistake in reasoning or in the form of an argument. Often, the fallacy is going to seem correct, but upon closer examination, we can see that there's a problem that's there. So a fallacious argument, we could also call it a non sequitur. You've probably heard that term. It's from the Latin. This just means it does not follow. So here we have a conclusion that doesn't logically follow from the premises that are supposed to support it. And if that's the case, then the argument has to be rejected. And in the broad sense, all arguments that have a fallacy are non sequitur. So we can use it in a general sense of all problematic uh, attempts at an argument. We're also going to use it as a specific type of argument down the road. So we'll see that one again uh, probably numerous times. And when we talk about the types of logical fallacies, we could say that there are two types of logical fallacies, broadly speaking. And that's going to follow, or they're going to follow, from the two types of logic we just looked at. You have formal logical fallacies following from formal logic, and informal logical fallacies following from informal logic, which makes sense. Let's start with the formal fallacies. Now in my logic class, like I said, I usually do, do deductive reasoning first. So if you had taken my logic class, you would know a lot about formal fallacies before we even begin talking about informal fallacies. But in general, a formal fallacy is where you have an error in the form or structure of an argument. There might be no problem with the information, the premises of the conclusion might be fine in and of themselves, but implications can't be drawn because they don't relate. The premises don't relate to the conclusion. So for example, we could have something like the, what we call the four-term fallacy, which we find in categorical logic. When you're putting together a categorical syllogism, one of the rules that you're going to see later on is that the syllogism has to have three terms and no more than three terms for it to work. If you have a four-term fallacy, very clearly we've got four terms. Right? And that's too many terms because implications can't be drawn when you have too many terms in the argument because it's going to fail to make a connection. Usually what you have is what's called a, uh, the absence of a middle term that will link the two premises that get us to our conclusion. So that's a, a pretty common fallacy. And we're going to see something very similar to that when we talk about some informal fallacies of ambiguity, which will be in our next session. Another common informal fallacy, sorry, formal fallacy would be denying the antecedent, which we find in what we call hypothetical syllogisms, where we work from a sufficient condition to a necessary condition or from an antecedent to a consequent. All right, the not denial of an antecedent is going to be the problem here. So if I was going to give you a really simple um, illustration of this, a hypothetical argument might go something like this. If it's a circle, then it's a geometrical figure. Well, it is a circle, therefore it's a geometrical figure. Now, if I was going to deny the antecedent, what I would do is something like this. If it's a circle, then it's a geometrical figure. Well, this thing here is not a circle. So what can you conclude? Well, you can't conclude very much. You can't conclude it's not a geometrical figure, and you can't conclude that it is a geometrical figure, because all I've said is it's not a circle. Right? It could be a square, in which case it's still a geometrical figure, or it could be a box of donuts. Actually, that's still a geometrical figure. Let me use something else. It could be um, a glass of water, but you know the point, right? You really can't conclude anything because it's like trying to prove something based on an absence of evidence. We're going to talk about that a lot when we get to some of the other fallacies down the road, but that's definitely problematic. Okay, So that's another formal fallacy. What we're going to look at right now are what the difference are with informal fallacies. So informal fallacies are going to be when we have errors that are due to things like unclear meaning. All right, the terms in the argument, there's some kind of vague, ambiguous element here. Right, so There's what we might call just linguistic confusion, unclear meaning. It could be errors due to points of irrelevancy. Right? points that are irrelevant to the subject of the argument. It could be due to presupposing facts without having any evidence. So those are the three basic categories that I'm going to use when we cover the different specific informal fallacies. Now the whole idea here is informal fallacies have nothing to do with the structure or form of the argument. So we're not going to call them formal, we're going to call them material fallacies because they actually deal with the matter at hand. What's been stated is it relevant? Is it a presupposition that's unsupported? Is it ambiguous? Do we understand what's going on? So that's the, the basic gist of the informal fallacies. Now we can also categorize them, and you can categorize them in a lot of different ways. The three main categories that I'm going to use are going to be the following. 
and they're based on the three types of errors that I just mentioned that we could talk about fallacies of ambiguity, fallacies of relevance, fallacies of presumption. So I'm going to give you different videos on each of these. And matter of fact, some of these categories are so big, I'm going to break them up into several smaller videos. But like I said, you could pick up a logic textbook, a critical thinking textbook, different ones, and you're going to find different people organize the informal fallacies in lots of different ways because a lot of the different fallacies could be categorized under different names, and a lot of them actually do have different names. And one of the things you're also going to see as you look at specific examples or try to identify, you know, what's going on in this argument or that argument or with this statement or that statement, you're going to realize that, well, there are often multiple things going on. It, could, it might not be just one particular fallacy that's being uh, committed here. So you're going to have to get used to a little bit of that. So in a way, I can give you an example, and you could come out with a very different answer than I do, and you're not necessarily going to be wrong. You just might not have seen the same error that I saw, or I might not have seen the error that you saw, and they may have committed both errors at the same time. So it makes it a little bit difficult in testing to see if you've mastered informal fallacies, but nonetheless, we're going to attempt to do that down the road. Anyways, let's take a look at basically a fallacy family tree. If we're going to put this fallacy stuff into maybe a porphyrian tree, we could do it this way. There's the general category of fallacy, which is any error in logic. And we can break that down to the two kinds that we just did, the formal fallacies and the informal fallacies. It's following down from the informal fallacies, we've got the three categories that I just introduced you to, the fallacies of ambiguity, relevance, or presumption. And then under presumption, we could break it down further and talk about those that are causal and those that are non-causal. And I'm going to be breaking all of our fallacies down in this exact way. So let's start by looking at each of these categories in just a very little bit more depth because I'm going to expand on these a little bit later in the other videos. But for now, let's talk about the three categories. Fallacy of ambiguity first. All right, a fallacy of ambiguity has to do with an argument that's vague, right? It's unclear, uses imprecise terms. The content of the argument is either incoherent or inaccurate because the arguer is misusing terms or making grammatical mistakes or something else along those lines. The second category is going to be the category of relevance. Fallacies of relevance, what you have is a premise that has little or nothing to do with the actual conclusion. So the argument is actually irrelevant to the topic at hand. And there's three basic subdivisions of the form of fallacies of relevance that I'm going to use. The first one we'll, we'll call attacking the source or the ad fontem fallacies. Here the arguer attacks the source of the argument rather than the argument itself which needs to be attacked. The second is an appeal to emotion. An arguer plays on somebody's emotions in order to sway their opinion. It's an attempt to elicit sentiments um, like pity, anger, fear, desire. There's lots of different emotions we could actually call on, but it's in order to persuade the person. So rather than dealing with the actual issue and appealing to what's right or wrong, rational or irrational, the emotions are going to motivate. But again, emotions are irrelevant for discovering truth. The last group are the attempts to distract. The arguer is going to take the focus off the real issue by changing the subject or attempting to prove something that's irrelevant to the primary discussion. And it's difficult to identify an argument that distracts if it's somewhat related to the issue. So you're going to see lots of different ways that this can take place. But like I said, we're going to cover all of these in different videos. The third category we're going to call the category of presumption fallacies. So here, we're talking about hidden, unsupported, or assumed ideas behind the argument, right? what we call literally presumptions. The conclusion can't be verified because it relies on a presupposition that requires some kind of substantiation. It's a questionable presupposition. And we'll break this down really into two subdivisions, the fallacies of presumption in general. And these are going to involve unsupported assumptions in general arguments that don't involve what we might call inductive reasoning specifically. And then those that are presumption um, fallacies dealing with inductive reasoning. And those are going to involve attempts to prevent a reliable inductive process, which, like I said, we'll talk about later. Or a probable conclusion that's based on inductive reasoning. All right, so those are all of the categories we're going to look at. And in our next episode, we're actually going to turn our attention to informal fallacies of ambiguity. That'll be our first category. Now, like I said, there are lots of fallacies, but this first grouping you're actually going to see is the smallest and possibly the most humorous of all the groupings, those fallacies of ambiguity. So until then, take care, and I'll see you in the next video.